Hi and welcome to another video on SQL TV. This time we are talking about transactions and concurrency. So concurrency is the ability to access or modify multiple shared data on, at the same time. That means the more processes at the same time can read and write shared data the more, the higher is my uh, concurrency. If many processes wait for each other or block each other, then I have, um, it, yeah, reduced concurrency, let's say. I can show you a quick example right here. So we have a data row right here, okay? And then we have a process P1 that wants to read the data. And we have a process P2 that wants to write data to the same row at the same time. So now obviously we have to figure out how we do it because if we read while P2 writes then we have the problem that we may read um, old data and new data mixed up and yeah this, is not, this will not work. <laughs> so we need a plan to how to deal with this situation and for this um, there are two approaches that are called pessimistic and an optimistic uh, concurrency model. And we just start with the pessimistic uh, concurrency model. The pessimistic model um, yeah, assumes that we have um, this situation very often, so that we very often uh, have readers and writers on the same exact data to the same time, so we have to deal somehow with this situation. To do this, the pessimistic approach uses logs. So for instance, in this situation, if P1 first reads, then it puts a shared log on the row. If now any other reader wants to come, also putting a shared log is possible since those logs can be placed multiple times from multiple processes. But what can't happen is that the writer process wants to uh, put a write log, which is an exclusive log on here. This won't work because the shared log won't allow it, okay? This is the situation one. So, um, in other words, writers are blocked by readers. Also the other, way is possible so that we have the writer that uh, wants to write first which obviously he can do putting an exclusive lock on here and then we have the uh, reader coming and he can't put uh, it can't put a, a shared lock on it and also no other writer can put an uh, exclusive lock as you can see the situation can be resolved like this and this is the default behavior in sql server when you don't change anything on the transaction isolation levels um, but obviously we are kind of serializing the process okay we manage the situation but at the cost of blocking and waiting and, and so on and so forth so this is possible the second approach is the optimistic model and the optimistic model works a little bit different uh, assuming we have the same situation right here and let's assume that the p2 writer comes first okay it comes first and puts again an exclusive lock right here but now we don't want the reader to be blocked by this what happens actually is that um, before the write of the of p2 a copy is created of row of this of that row let's say copy here and this copy is put into the to the version store so the version store is a place in tempdb that means if you are using this kind of approach then your tempdb also grows a little bit more so what now P1 does is not writing from the original row since P2 already started, uh, sorry, since P2 already started uh, writing here. So we can't really figure out what is the new kind of data, what are the new columns, the old columns. So we just uh, are redirecting our read to the version store, which happens of course automatically in SQL Server. So the process one actually reads from the old version, like the version one and this is version two being built from process two right now so we are reading version one since this was the last stable version and while while this happens p2 can just modify the, uh, the row to um, to a newer version this is no problem now readers are not blocked by writers but still writers are of, of course blocked by each other because still there is no possible way that i can write the same uh, the same cell or the same uh, row in this case um, with different uh, contents it's not possible to mix it up so now knowing uh, how this behaves, we should talk about the, the word or the, the, the term um, that is called transaction, okay? Everything in SQL Server works in transactions. Actually a transaction is the most basic unit of, uh, of work in SQL Server. 
and no matter we if we use the pos the, the optimistic or the, the pessimistic model we st we're always talking about transactions a transaction consists of at least one SQL statement the thing is within a transaction all the statements I have they are not final until I commit the transaction so I can start a transaction do some stuff and if I do not commit it, it's kind of in the loop. It's not really uh, visible for other transactions. Nobody else can see this transaction, uh, but the transaction itself, of course. If I don't commit an undo, which is called a re rollback, then um, nothing ever uh, happened. So logically, this state I had was never there when I rollbacked it. So uh, this is the thing about uh, uh, transactions and multiple statements in it. When I say readers block readers, writers block writers, I actually mean the transaction that reads blocks the transaction that writes and so on and so forth. We are not talking about single statements, we are always talking about the transactions. This is important because mo most logs are, hold until, are held until the end of the transaction. So it is not um, until the end of the statement, but until the end of the transaction. Let me give you an example. Okay, in this little example, we have here a, an explicit transaction. That means I start a transaction and I commit the transaction in the end. I have an update and delete and an insert statement right here. And all of those uh, now are a unit, right? Are a transaction unit. So if, I, if the update uh, statement puts a lock somewhere, it is held until this commit. If the delete statement puts a lock somewhere, it is held until this commit. So it ha everything stays until the commit, okay? Of course, you can also have select statements in your transaction. And locks are most uh, are in, a, in, a, yeah, in the default uh, transaction isolation level. The select lock is not held, it's the only lock that is not held until the end of transaction, but only until the end of the statement. This is due to the fact that we don't actually write something in the, in the transaction lock because we're just reading. This, act, this, this select action is never uh, locked in the transaction lock. So, yeah, this is an explicit uh, transaction. There's one last thing I want to mention in this video before I close it because, to be honest, um, I can't really handle that much of, uh, of thing. I, I, I would really like to go a little bit step further, but then the video will be too long. So let's just um, tell you, uh, I want to tell you what, the, uh, because normally when you worked in SQL Server, you probably ne or most likely never used begin transaction commit or begin trend begin or commit. You never used it probably. This is due to the fact that in SQL Server, every DML, so that is a data modification language T-SQL statement, um, is an implicit transaction. So what does this mean? So let me take away this commit and this begin trend. If you would now fire up those three commands in one row in your SQL Server Management Studio, then you don't actually commit and you're questioning, okay, are those three then a, connect, uh, a, a transaction? Or what, what happens? Uh, yeah, I can tell you what happens. If you execute these in one batch, then there are three implicit transactions. So what SQL Server does, it takes the first DML statement, the first update, it puts implicitly, so I mark this in red because you don't write it, but SQL Server implicitly writes it. You, uh, you put implicitly here a begin transaction and afterwards a commit. Of course, you don't see this because SQL Server does not really write this out to your, uh, to your SQL Server Management Studio, but implicitly this happens. A transaction is beginning, an update statement, then a commit. The same is true for all the other statements, no matter if you mark them all and run them all on, in one batch or what, this doesn't matter. It is still, those are still three separate transactions. If you, that means also that they can fail independently. This can fail, this can succeed, this can fail and this will be the state of your, status of your uh, DB. If you want them all to succeed or all to fail, that is run in transaction, you have to explicitly state begin trend, commit here and then uh, either all three uh, succeed or all three fail. So this is the basic the basics you learned about consistency, uh, concurrency, sorry, about concurrency, about the two concurrency models and how basically we can achieve um, the concurrency there. And you know also about explicit and implicit transaction and how SQL Server handles this. So let this be enough for this video. I want to uh, share in another, in the next video, uh, the, the, the properties of a transaction. They, they fulfill uh, the asset properties and I will 
show you uh, the properties in detail next time and we will also talk a little bit more about transactions and logs and so on and so forth in the next few sessions so thanks for watching um, have a nice day please uh, subscribe my video please follow me on twitter please um, spread the word if you really like the video spread it to your community or to your work, uh, co-workers because i really want those uh, viewers to um, handle more topics so also please leave a feedback if you really liked it or really disliked it please leave a comment thanks again for watching and see you next time bye